Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and welcome to the 45th episode of my second 1 billion iron ingot challenge. In today's episode, I'm going to speed up my pulverizers in my ore processing facility with something that is called the Thermal Mediator. Now, the Thermal Mediator is a device from the mod Thermal Expansion that can speed up adjacent thermal expansion machines, and it does that through using a coolant. Now, there are five different coolants that we can use with the Thermal Mediator. Those are IC2 coolant, crushed ice, distilled water, water, and gelid cryothium. Now, the different coolants actually provide a different level of boost. For example, water provides the least amount of boost at only 20% boosted speed versus IC2 coolant, which will boost speed up to 50%, and gelid cryothium, which actually does 60%. So I think what I'm going to try to do in today's episode is I'm going to set up something to create IC2 coolant, throw it into thermal mediators and speed up the pulverizers. Now the reason I'm doing that is because my pulverizers are not keeping up and I don't really have any more room to build more of them. Now this entire level in this building is made up of pulverizers that are all busy pulverizing things. And if we look at the buffer inventories that I have set up, uh, most of them are full. So three out of the four are completely full. And if we actually look in my system here, I actually have 393,000 redstone ore and rising that is, has yet to be processed. So I need to do something about that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up those machines. So first off, let's take a look at exactly uh, how much or exactly if this works at all. So let's grab some pulverizers, do a little bit of testing. So let's grab two pulverizers. These pulverizers are identical. So let's see here. They both have uh, four auxiliary reception coil augments let's grab some rtgs uh, to power them and we'll put the rtgs back here and then we'll set up a chest and this will be just plopped down in the middle here and then let's set up one of the thermal meter thermal mediators excuse me and let's see here and let's put this one over here and let's get some water, a water source block. So that'll go there. That'll give this mediator water. And as we can see, it is functioning. It's plus 20%. So let's grab some diamonds or some type of ore. It doesn't have to be diamonds. I kind of figured I would have some diamonds. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start this one first. And then I'm going to start this one. And uh, I'm going to let this run for a little bit. And uh, when... You know what? I don't even need to do that. This, you can already start to see that this one's just a little bit ahead of this one. And I started with this one first. So obviously this system does work. So that's all we need to know. So let's go ahead and tear this down and let's get started with the build for today. So let's get rid. I am definitely going to be using some RTGs in today's episode because to make IC2 coolant, I will need to use industrial craft machines. Uh, however, the nuclear craft mod provides energy for both RF and for industrial to craft two EU. So that's good. Okay, so let's take a look at the recipe for the coolant. So the coolant is made in a uh, fluid solid canning machine in the fluid enriched mode with lapis lazuli dust. Now this lapis lazuli dust can be ba can be made rather easily with pulverizers so that is obviously a good thing um let's see here i can also use macerators i don't think i am going to use macerators i think i'm going to go ahead and use pulverizers okay that's weird i didn't know that that was a thing okay so i am going to need some pulverizers and let's grab those two that are right here Let's grab a canning machine. And I'm honestly not sure how much energy this uses. But let's grab a transformer upgrade and some overclockers. Okay, at the very least, I think it uses two, two EU per tick. I'm not entirely sure about that. So let's go off of that assumption for right now. So an RTG will provide, I believe, 25 EU per tick. Let me let me double check this. 
It's 400 RF per tick, but the EU is at a 1 16th of that rate. So I think it, yeah, it should be 25 EU per tick. So, okay, so we might be able to do one more overclock or we might not, I'm not really sure. No, we should, we should only be able to use five overclockers. If my assumption is correct that this uses two EU per tick, it might use as much as 10 EU per tick, in which case, I would be able to use two overclockers. Yeah, I would only be able to use two overclockers. So that would be not ideal, but uh, let's go ahead and I think what I'm gonna do is, actually first off, let me grab the thermal mediators because I'm gonna go ahead and set those down first. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to have the uh, IC2 coolant stuff up on the roof there or on the ceiling, I should say, not the roof. Um, but I'm just going to have a bunch of, th of thermal mediators pretty much wherever I can put them between these machines. And the good thing about the thermal mediators is that they will affect both machines on either side. In fact, you could have as many as six, uh, I believe, you could have all six sides filled with other thermal expansion machines, and it would give benefits to all of them. But then again, if you had all six side co sides covered, how would you be getting the the coolant, whatever you're using, into the thermal mediator? So in all, for all practical purposes, you could probably do five sides. And it would provide the cooling to all five sides. And therefore the benefits. So that is pretty cool. But obviously in this setup, I only need it to provide benefits to what is on both sides here. So that's good. And it should do that just fine. Okay, the next step here is I do want to set up some fluid duct. And I have a bunch of this made up. So let's just grab as much as I have. And we can get rid of the rest of the mediators there. And we just need to connect these up. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera. I'm just going to do strips along each uh, row of the thermal mediators. And once I have that done, I will be right back. Okay, so now I have all of the super laminar fluid duct all laid down. The next thing I need to do is I actually need to export lapis to some kind of storage, I think is how I'm going to do this. So let's get an export bus. And I will also need some cabling here. So let's grab some cards. Let's grab modular storage. And you know what? I can go ahead and use this tier three module. Uh, let's grab some lapis because that's the thing that I will need. And mm, let's see here. I need some cable. I'm gonna need some conduit, some ME conduit of some sort. And then some covered cable as well. And let's go with the blue variants. And also, uh, let's grab some of these, not those, uh, I need the, oh shoot, what are they called? Okay, they're just called cable facades. Okay, so if we grab our dense ME cable here, I see that I do have uh, some of this strung up, up above. So I should be able to use this. I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to replace this right here. With covered cable. And then I'm going to have an export bus. And this will have the acceleration cards. And can do the modular storage. And I didn't set up that bus, did I? And that's kind of dumb. I need to do that. But now, this should be getting lapis at some point soon. Uh, up above, I do want to tidy that up because I pretty much left a hole right here. So I should be able to place a facade. I'm going to have to get rid of this momentarily, though. So I can do that. Then I can place this back down with the import bus. And it's the acceleration cards, and then that should import. Yeah. On these... Okay, I thought I had two import buses on these chests. Apparently, I only have the one. But yeah, look at that. That's crazy. 
I'm not entirely sure that that can keep up. Anyways, I'm just going to assume it will, at least for now. So, let's see if this one's keeping up. Yes, it is. Okay, so now that I have the lapis in here, let's go ahead and get some pulverizers going. Um, let's do pulverizers. Let's do them here and here. Uh, we can auto input from the left and output to the back. And this will be auto input from the right and output to the back. Um, and what would be the best way to do this? You know what? I might go with two of these canning machines. And I, I think I am. And I'm not sure if that's actually the way to go or not. I will try it. So let's go with, uh, let's put down our RTG and hopefully this doesn't explode from over voltage. Okay, so that's, maybe I need some type of connector. So maybe if I, okay, where'd my RTG go? Did I not pick it up? Oh well. I have more of these things not a big deal so let's grab some glass fiber cable as well because maybe this needs some sort of connection okay there it is so let's try this yes okay that works and I placed that in the wrong spot again okay so that should be good uh, we do need to put this in fluid enrich mode um, fluid enrich mode and I do need a water source so let's grab this put it there and this should start going uh, let's go ahead and drop that in okay yeah so that's gonna be too much what about three can I do three what about four can I do four it doesn't look like it's doing four okay so hmm I'm not really sure what the power draw is, but it can do three of the overclockers. So that's what we're going to start with anyways. So... Oh, wow. Well, that's not too bad for speed-wise. Oh, yeah, and I forgot uh, power source for these guys. So let's grab a couple more RTGs. And there and there okay so we should be getting more lapis lazuli dust and what I can do is I can actually okay so how exactly do I want to do this I think what I'm gonna do is um, have this fluid solid canning machine supply the first two lines here actually no that won't I don't think that'll work super well um, let's do something like this. I don't want it to, I don't want to place a, uh, fluid act right here because it would get water in it. And that is not, you know what? Actually it wouldn't be, no, that'll work because what I can do is the water will actually just be used by the thermal mediator mediators and then it will actually, um, go away. So that actually works fine. So let's see here. Let's hook that up like there. And then we should see some water. Yeah. Okay, so those are going and the water should be clearing out. Uh, one thing I do want to add are some upgrades here. And I want to do fluid ejector upgrades uh, for each of the candy machines. And I want to do at the bottom side. So let's do that. And it should automatically extract or output into the fluid duct there so let's see here I wonder if any of these are out of water apparently not maybe well it's certainly going somewhere anyways let's just go ahead and finish this up as far as hooking up all of this
and then we can see if I kind of highly doubt that I'm actually producing enough of the coolant but the coolant should last a decent amount of time okay so where are we okay so it looks like the choke point might be okay so wait a sec oh I think I know what's going on here so these there are energy conduits up here and actually I can take advantage of that I can just tap my pulverizer into the energy conduits what was happening was the RTGs were just pumping their energy into the energy conduits up here rather than into the pulverizers so that obviously was not working out but if I do this then I should have power to these pulverizers and they should get going okay let's see here okay so I might actually need to replace all of my thermal mediators or at least these ones okay so yeah I can definitely tell that it's going faster than it was before so obviously that's what I want to see here uh, let's see So yeah, it definitely looks like I'm going to have to get rid of, I'm going to have to replace these thermal mediators. I think what I'm going to do real fast is I'm going to tear this line out and then just replace it. And actually that won't take but just a second because there's not that many machines in, or devices in this line. And let's try this again. Okay, so it very the uh, fluid solid canning machines are actually keeping up with the pulverizers. Uh, I'm not wondering if there isn't a faster way to make lapis lazuli dust. Okay, let's double check this. There's the crusher. I don't think that's any faster. Obviously, the po I'm using the pulverizer. Ooh, sag mills. I might be able to speed this up if I use sag mills. In fact, let's do a quick test. If I use the advanced sag mills, I know I could speed it up. It would just kind of complicate things because they're actually two blocks tall. So let's do a simple speed test out here. Let's get rid of a bunch of junk I don't need. So let's grab a sag mill, a just regular sag mill, and then a pulverizer. I need it to be completely upgraded. So I need a conversion kit and some augments. Okay, let's get away from that. Okay, so sag mill versus pulverizer fully upgraded I believe this does have a capacitor or the best capacitor so let's throw these down let's throw this in here actually I need to wait for this to power up otherwise it will not draw the maximum amount of power that it can uh, so I will be back once this energy buffer is full okay I'm ready for this so let's throw these in here and I did give the sag mill just a slight head start. Actually, it looks like the pulverizer is definitely faster. However, there are ways to speed up sag mills. Now, if we look at the grinding balls, if we shift and we hover over everything, if we look at the power use stats, the lower the power use, the faster the, the, faster the operation actually occurs. So if we were to use an alloy, iron alloy grinding ball, the processing speed would be sped up quite a bit. Also, there's the redstone alloy grinding bowl that we could use. Um, and just to demonstrate this, I'm gonna grab some of these iron alloy grinding balls and let's grab a fresh stack of lapis. So in that first step, in the first test there, the segment was definitely slower. 
but let's do another test with these guys. So let's throw that in there. Let's throw that in there. Ooh, I'm not sure that it actually it does not. Okay, so I see what's going on here. What's happening is that uh, Lapis Lazuli is not affected by the Grindy Ball. If we were to throw something else in here, and let's grab like an ore. So let's grab Redstone Ore. Uh, this will be sped up quite significantly. Just look at how fast this is going. And it is using the grinding bowl. So apparently that doesn't work with straight lapis. So that won't really work. So let's just get rid of this. So that's kind of unfortunate. That was one thought train I had. Clearly that's not viable. So let's actually take a look at how well or not well this is doing so far and obviously there's nothing down here there's nothing down here uh, there's some icy coolant here so that's good i know that the ic2 coolant does last quite a bit longer than water so that's one thing that i definitely should keep in mind uh let's see what about here wait it's nothing's in here that's weird as this is or those are like the closest machines, I would expect them to be getting some of the coolant by now. I could use thermal mediators on these pulverizers. <laughs> and actually, now that I say that, I am kind of considering that. At least on this one right here. So actually, I'm going to do that. So why not? So let's set this right here. Uh, we can do input from the bottom. And then just hook this up like so. Actually, to make sure that this actually gets some, let's do this real fast. Okay, yeah, we can see that this fluid solid canning machine is not keeping up. Where is this one? Kind of is. It's, yes, this one's keeping up. Uh, this one is not. So this is clearly working. Uh, let's go ahead and reconnect that. And the IC2 coolant, like I said, does last quite a while. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and call this good. Hopefully, hopefully it's actually producing enough of the IC2 coolant to, to kind of trickle through the system and eventually get to all the mediators. If it doesn't, uh, oh well. I'm still getting a, a net positive here because I'm speeding up so, lots of these machines. I don't know if it's all of them, but it is a lot of them. So as we can see, like this is operating a lot faster than say like, uh, actually I don't even know where I can find one that's not being, a f okay. Yeah, th this is an active. So this, this should be processing a, about 50% faster than this one. And it does look like there is some difference there. So hopefully with my sped up or processing here, uh, we will start to see some better results here because clearly my ore processing is not or was not keeping up. Hopefully it is at this point. So uh, yeah, if actually, so in today's episode, I set up uh, the system of the thermal mediators in my pulverizing room of my ore processing facility. Uh, essentially that is to hopefully speed up all of the pulverizers by 50% because I'm using IC2 coolant. And it's basically this system up here. Uh, hopefully, Hopefully my ore processing can actually uh, catch up and then keep up with all the stuff that I'm getting now. But anyways, uh, as of right now, I have 232 million iron ingots. I'm not exactly sure what my rate is at this point because I've added four tier six void ore miners since last time I roughly calculated my rate. So I'm actually guessing that my rate is somewhere between 15 and 20 million iron ingots per day. But that's really, really rough estimate, so I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. But anyways, I'm almost at 250 million iron ingots, which is 
the one fourth waypoint in my challenge so that's pretty exciting anyways if you enjoyed today's episode definitely give it a like if you enjoy watching automation type stuff in modern minecraft definitely consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already anyways signing off i am minecraft phenom08 and i will see you next time